let's take a look at creating some um, bar graphs, different sorts. Uh, first off, we want to um, check our add-ins. So I'm going to do a file. And um, then options. You'll see an add-ins here. And um, there's a manage Excel add-ins here. This might look different um, based upon your version of Excel, but they're kind of all the same principles. Somewhere you'll see manage add-ins. I'll choose go. And you want to choose uh, analysis tool pack because you want that selected. I always choose the VBA to just be on the safe side. Now, once you've uh, selected that and you clicked OK, then up here under data, you'll see uh, option that says data analysis. Now, let's uh, take a look at creating a, a histogram. Let's say I got grades 98, 97, 92, 90, 89, 88, 83. Uh, 85, 87, 91, 72, 73, 71, just making up some numbers. Okay, that's probably good enough. Now this is in cell A, A1, our first one, through A17. So if I come up to my data analysis, uh, with if you scroll down, you may have to scroll down, you'll see a histogram option. And if you click OK on that, it asks you for an input range. And here's where you can type in A1 colon A17. Now you can say chart output and new worksheet's fine. And I'll just click OK. This creates a very basic uh, histogram. Um, and it gives you some bins. <clears throat> now these um, may not be what you want. Bin is your upper class limit. So what it's giving me is it's giving me 60, 69.5, 79, 88.5. Now, um, if you assume one decimal place, and unfortunately, um, I don't think this is a set class width. Let me see, 88.5 minus 79 is 9.5. Oh, I guess it is. 79 minus 69.5, 9.5. Okay, so the class width is 9.5. That's good. So, um, assuming uh, one decimal place, since that's what I have here, um, this uh, stops at 60. Here, I, if, I, if I come up with just a gap, um, this would be different if we want boundaries. Um, then uh, I'll assume a gap of 0.1. So this would be 69 or 60.1. I assume a gap of 0.1 because we have one decimal place. If you have two decimal places, you assume a gap of 0 0.01. Uh, three decimal places, 0 0.001. And if you have no decimal places, you can assume a gap of 1. Um, okay, so now um, we said that our class width is 9.5. So if I take this and add 9.5, and you could do 60.1 plus 9.5, just as long as you put the equals on there, and 69.6 plus 9.5, this one would be 60.1 minus 9.5, because I'm going back 1. And this would be my uh, frequency um, distribution. So this would be 1, 1, 5, 4. I guess we have a more. So more than 88.5. That'd be 6. Okay, so that's how you built a, a frequency distribution from a, the bin listing here. wasn't very um, wasn't very easy to work with. Well, you can control your own bins, your own upper classes. If I go back to sheet one, in uh, column B, I'm gonna put my um, my bins, my upper class limits. Um, so maybe I'm gonna go with 100, 90, 80, 70. 
and um, I probably need a 60 since I got a 60 assuming these are our upper class limits so now if I go back to the data tab and data analysis histograms already chose I click OK it puts um, dollar signs before those but that's fine that's still point A1 A17 For my bin range I'm going to tell it B1 colon B5 chart output still selected and now if I do an OK I don't know why I put more there when <laughs> there wasn't um, anything else, but um, regardless. Um, this gives us a little bit better picture of our histogram. And the bin is, again, our upper class limit. So it tells us our bins are 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Now, since there's no decimals here, I'll assume a, a gap of 1. So um, I'll come back to that one. This is 60, so this would be 61, because it's a gap of 1. Um, and then my class width is 10, so this would be 71, 81, 91. And this would be 51. <clears throat> and then our frequency would be 1, 2, 4, 6, and 4. Now, um, we could use boundaries. Boundaries is where the upper class limit here matches the lower class limit here. But um, uh, this is fine for what we've done. And if your version of Excel puts a more on there um, and you're creating a histogram, don't worry about trying to get rid of that more. <laughs> it's strange it even puts it there. Okay. Now that is um, a histogram. Now, just a bar graph. I'm going to click this plus to create a new sheet down here. And um, make it a little bit bigger. Then let's say I have uh, January is 1,000. February is 2,000. March is 3,000. April is 1,500. And um, uh, May is... Um, uh, 42.50. Okay. This give this will give you an idea. Okay, so um, and I always have to play this a little bit myself. Sometimes you highlight a month, sometimes you don't. And I'll go ahead and highlight um, both both columns. I held, I clicked the January, held down my left mouse button, dragged down to here, and then I'll do an insert, and over here. Um, you see the first option is bars, and uh, looks like it worked uh, selecting the month. It puts the month down here. And that's how you can create a bar graph. And you can click up here. If you click twice, you can modify the title. Uh, sales for January through May. <clears throat> Lots of other options you can do. You can Google how to... Put a legend on there. Not to, you don't need a legend on here, but uh, you can Google in general how to put a legend on. How you can um, change these uh, down here to say something different, so forth. Now, um, if I have this selected, then um, there's a pie chart also, so you can choose a pie chart. And again, same same principle. You can uh, just change different items on there. But uh, those are just some ways that you can um, work with um, different bar graphs and so forth uh, using this uh, version of Excel. And I'm not even sure what version of Excel I'm on, to be honest. It's a fairly new one. Um, let's see. I'm not even sure where, where they've moved that to, to be honest. Um, probably when I go into Excel, it would tell me, but I'm not going to exit out just to, just to show that. Um,
used to be a um, option right there. But that's been a while. Anyway, that's how you work with um, with bar graphs.